We used computer vision to solve the game of chess. And by that I mean, we made an app that uses computer vision to understand where chess pieces are on a chessboard, pass that information to an open source chess engine, and then give back move recommendations so that you always put your piece in the best spot possible. And not only did we build this in a 48 hour hackathon, but Snap CEO Evan Spiegel dropped by to say, that's pretty cool. In this video, I'm gonna walk through how we made Chess Boss, a prototype app that uses computer vision to make the game of chess more fun to play. Along the way, I'm gonna unveil all the tips and tricks that we used so that you can build your own apps like Chess Boss and even the tools that are free to use so that you can reproduce our results. Let's dive in. Okay, real quick, a little bit of background here. In 2019, my friend Brad and I went to the TechCrunch Disrupt Hackathon a 40 hour competition to build cool things. We thought it'd be awesome to build the app that I showed a teaser of at the beginning, which I'll show the full thing of at the end, that solves the game of chess. Now, to make something work in that 48 hours, we made a number of simplifying assumptions. However, everything that we did to build that prototype has a lot of learnings that would be relevant for you to build your own version of Chess Boss, let alone your own computer vision applications. Let's go. So what does it take to identify one of these on one of these? First things first, a really clear problem statement. From there, we define the architecture of our application. We then dove headfirst into building and data collection, model preparation, and the app logic. Finally, we stitch it all together into a working prototype, which I'll show you more about in a second. So first things first, a really clear problem statement. We decided we wanted to build an app that could identify where a chess piece was on a chess board and actually the overall state of the board and then give the user a recommendation on which move they should make that most increases their chances at success. So how did we think about the architecture for this? We knew first and foremost, we would need a computer vision model that would recognize where all the chess pieces are on a chess board. We actually used two different techniques for that that I'll talk more about in a second. Secondly, once we knew where the chess pieces are on the chessboard, we needed to use a chess engine to pass those coordinates to and receive back a move recommendation. Lastly, we had to stitch that all together into an application that an end user could use and interact with. So for the first part of that, of the architecture and the computer vision model, let me actually talk about it in the context of our data set. The data set is actually completely open and available. Um, on public.roboflow.com. It's just called the chess pieces data set. Now I'm gonna open up this data set on my Roboflow account, uh, which by the way, you could actually grab this data set if you wanted by simply opening it up and clicking fork data set. I've actually gone ahead and done that. So the data set's present on my account here. Now, what do I mean when I say uh, we had to have a really, really you know, clear problem statement and a clear approach to this problem? I wanna mention that you'll notice all of our chess images are really consistent in their perspective on where the chessboard is in each image. And that was actually a huge simplifying assumption we made. To be clear, we didn't say we wanna make an app that can understand a chess piece on any chessboard from any angle. Although while that's possible, that problem would require a lot more data from a wider array of chessboards and a lot more perspectives. We only had 48 hours, so we said, Let's assume that the chessboard is in a constant position relative to the camera. That's why you see that in our case, we had a tripod with an iPhone pointed at the chessboard and that controlled for the perspective of what our model would need to know on the chessboard itself. So with that in mind, we had to capture a ton of data from that perspective. Now, we actually didn't really capture a ton, I have to be honest with you. We captured about 289, exactly 289 images. Once we had those images captured, we wanted to train a model that would recognize what those individual pieces are. But we didn't just need to know what the pieces are. Remember, we needed to know where they are on the board, which is why we had to create individual annotations. And when I say individual annotations, I mean, literally drawing these individual bounding boxes around all of the pieces on the chessboard, right? And with those bounding boxes, we then had 
the ability to train a model of where the pieces would be. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you have a model that can identify the bounding box of a piece, that doesn't tell you exactly where that piece is on the chessboard. And you'd be right. So our computer vision model actually had two different parts to it. We first want to identify generally where the board was in the image. And then once we knew where the board was, we would normalize perspective relative to our, our camera angle. And we would identify where the chess piece was with a bounding box. Between those two pieces of information, we would make an estimation of where the chess piece was on the chessboard. So how do we do that? A chessboard is standard eight by eight, right? There's eight squares across, eight squares down. So we actually did kind of a, a cheat code here where we, once we identified the chessboard in our images, we just had a standard rectangle detector. We then divided that square into rule-based eight by eight grid. With that grid, we would check and see where our computer vision model that was doing detections of the pieces overlapped with the grid position. Do you see what I mean? If you have a bounding box of a chess piece and you have an assumption that it, this eight by or this eight by eight grid must be evenly split, then we could check and see and make an approximate guess of where the chess piece is on that grid. I'll admit this isn't perfect, right? It's very susceptible to error. In an improved world, you would also train a model to probably recognize the positions more precisely on the board. But for our case, where we had a constant perspective of the chessboard, this was a good assumption and one that allowed us to continue to the next step. So once we had the ability to identify where a chessboard was and what a chess piece was, we could then mesh those two pieces of information together to know where a chess piece is on the board. However, when we had all of our individual images, we had to train our model. And this is where actually um, RoboFlow comes into a lot of help here um, because you can train a model, uh, but you can actually increase the size of your data set to do so. I'll put links in the description about how you increase the size of your data set, but it basically boils down to pretending like the room that you're in could be randomly brighter or darker. Um, or maybe randomly zooming in or zooming out on given images. And if you do that, it's almost like you're creating new data for your model to learn from. So that helped us go from a data set of approximately 2,000 or exactly 2,870 annotations to one of many, 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 many more images and annotations. To train our model, we actually took a bit of a shortcut and just used Create ML, Apple's tool, for training models that can be immediately deployed to mobile devices. This is a good shortcut, though I would probably want to use a model that might be more robust than the one that comes with, with CreateML. Um, now, that's the model portion. For doing the actual chess logic, we made use of an open source chess engine. And you might be familiar with this chess engine if you're big into the chess world, but we just took Stockfish which is exactly as it sounds, an open source chess engine, where if you pass Stockfish the coordinates in the state of a chessboard, it will send back move recommendations of what someone should do. So if you think about it, you could like manually enter all the information of what's happening in a, a, uh, in a game of chess and then receive back move recommendations. But with the power of computer vision, we automated passing those recommendations to Stockfish and then received back the coordinates. And with that, we can take all of these pieces and identify where they are on the board and then make a move recommendation to the end user. Once we had all of those pieces in place, that is, we had the model running to identify where chess pieces are, we had the rectangle detector to identify where the board was, we meshed those two together to identify where we thought the pieces were on that chess board, we passed those to Stockfish. Stockfish would then send back what it thought the best move should make for each color, uh, black or white, depending on whose turn it was at that given point in time. And then we wired that up into an application using Firebase to relay in real time what the user should do. 
That's why in our demo, you see that there's two screen or two devices at play. There's the iPhone that's making detections and actually understanding and memorizing, uh, not memorizing, um, learning and seeing the chess game. And then there's the iPad, which is synthesizing um, the results of that information from the chessboard and, go, and, and getting the results back from Stockfish and visualizing it to the end user. Now, everything that we did along the way allowed us to get to a working prototype that we submitted for judging in the hack, uh, TechCrunch Disrupt Hackathon. Now, I will spoil the lead and say we didn't win, but, but we made it to one of the later rounds of, of evaluation. And what was maybe the coolest thing is, as I mentioned earlier, we had Evan Spiegel come by and he thought that what we had built was pretty cool. And he even thought that he would use it for maybe playing chess the next time he wanted to play with his friends, um, which maybe was the uh, most exciting thing that happened with, uh, with Chess Boss. But what's even better is all of the learnings that we had, we wrapped into a platform, RoboFlow, that makes it easier for developers to make their own sorts of apps like Chess Boss or really any computer vision application. Basically, we make it easy for you to manage your images, get them labeled, augment so that you can increase your data set size, export in a format that you want to train your model. You can actually even train your model directly in RoboFlow and export it to wherever you want to use it. It's a pretty cool tool and we're proud of what we're working on. So I'll put a link to that in the description too. Okay, so here's what you've been waiting for, the live demo. Now we have this iPhone pointed at the chessboard. I'm gonna pause here for a second because this is where you see two models are running. One model is doing object detection to understand what each piece is. You can see that with the iconography that we've printed on top of the chess piece and where that piece is. Because remember, object detection models provide bounding boxes and bounding boxes tell you where in an image something is. Now to map that bounding box to where on the chessboard precisely, which space it's in, we had to know where the chessboard is relative to the bounding box. That's why you see this um, uh, yellow rectangle here. The yellow rectangle is doing symbol detection to look for rectangles, actually. And the rectangle that it's finding is the chessboard. We then take that rectangle, that yellow uh, square, and we divide it into eight by eight grid. And that grid makes it so that we can make a kind of brittle, but good enough identification of where the bounding box overlaps with an individual space on the chessboard. And so wherever the bounding box bottom center is, tells us where in the image that chess piece is, we check that against our rule-based grid to make an identification of the chess piece. It's not perfect and it's subject to, you know, making the perspective constant but it did make it so that we can make a working prototype in a short period of time. So you'll see here that we also have the iPad, which the iPad is actually making the recommendations to the end user. Once we have the state of the chessboard, we pass that information to Stockfish and receive back from Stockfish what recommended move is gonna be best for that player. So here you see the best, it thinks that it's Black's turn. I actually moved a white piece in this video, but you get the point across. It's doing real-time detections of what should happen next. So I move the piece here, the computer vision model updates, and then this updates. Now, if you're paying close attention, you'll actually see that the overlap of where it thinks the white rook is here isn't perfect because the white rook was actually in grid in space two, although our imperfect matching thinks it's in space one. It had, you know, maybe 50 80 percent success at doing the overlap but what was really impressive is the object detection model that identifies chess pieces was over 99 percent effective at identifying what the pieces were so the big room for improvement is mapping the bounding box to the chess board um, for making this a little bit better the next time so you'll see i go back to the iphone and in, yes in fact the iphone knows that things have moved a little bit and the iPhone's actually doing a pretty good detection here. We just need to clean up the mapping, as I mentioned. And that's kind of it. That's how Chess Boss works. Now, we never ended up releasing Chess Boss because a number of the simplifying assumptions I made here, you had to have a 
iPod, or excuse me, a, a tripod with your iPhone parked in exactly the right spot. Um, and there's a little bit of instability of knowing where uh, the mapping was of the bounding box to the piece. But it wouldn't be that much work to clean up those things and create your own version of Chess Boss. In fact, you could even have users submit photos of their chess boards so that your model could learn a wider array of chess pieces besides just the US Chess Federation ones, which are very standard in their units of measure. Now, be sure that you like and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more tips, tricks, and computer vision apps. Until next time, good luck building.